future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. I promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. <laughs> Welcome. You are tuned into my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon and every Thursday at 7, Saturday at 1 on my syndicated CNBC News Radio channel, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and all the time on iHeartRadio. Tuesdays Live, though, are a little bit special because uh, there's no do-overs. And uh, we are broadcasting live from Sunset Gower Studio on Universal Broadcasting Network. And, um, gosh, let's see. If you missed the big news, I, uh, I've been written about now in Forbes magazine. So that joins the Inc. magazine article earlier this year. Thank you. Xie <laughs> xie. Uh, it's been an amazing ride, this thing called My Life. Uh, it's called PR Strategies for the One Person Business. Yes. Uh, it, and uh, thank you so much. Peace in, peace out to Cheryl Snap Connor, beautiful woman, fabulous writer who uh, approached me to, to write an article. And I thought she was talking about co writing an article. I had no idea she was going to actually pinpoint me and uh, highlight me. So I so appreciate that. And uh, to Steve Har Farber as well for the earlier article about perfectionism that uh, I got to splatter him with recovering perfectionism strategies in the Inc. article. So you can get both of those by just going to my Facebook page, my fan page that I post every good thing that happens to me and to you. So go there and give me the finger. I mean, a thumbs up, and then that way you'll you'll be connected anytime things go up. And if you've noticed, uh, I, f I am full on my um, Facebook friend page, so I have to kill people off when, when uh, somebody asks, and I look for someone who hasn't been active. But I have been doing Facebook Lives every single morning by the Ocean of Abundance, uh, sometimes with the balance hit for the day from the 21 day fast from complaining. So, uh, please do tune in there. As soon as I get a nice tribe, I'm going to shift it over to the Dr. Uh, Marissa so that more people can tune in and we'll just start the morning together with a meditative moment, a deep breath in and releasing all the stories in the drama with a little bit of tip from your favorite personal assistant to splatter you with hope and happiness. And that's what this show is about. So there's no gossip, no scandal, and no K-words, no Kardashian talk at all. Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality and how you can be happy 88% of the time. And it is Halloween, which means you get to pretend to be someone that you're not. So your Halloween challenge this year is to be nice. No, I'm kidding. Is to be someone that you've always wanted to be instead of mm, a witch, which is not usually a goal, uh, but something that you really wanted, wanted always to be. So I think I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be a mom of two teenage daughters, which I am already, but I'm going to be a patient mom of teenage daughters, but I'm just kidding. I peace in and peace out. I love my kids and I, I should have put up a picture of when they were, uh, in their little Hall Halloween costumes. My, one of my favorite memories, anytime I'm not feeling good, I flash back to that and puts a smile on my face. And they would kill me if I had done that. So it's a good thing that I haven't. But let's move on to, oh, I know one thing I forgot. Uh, thank you to all of my listeners for their continued support on my YouTube channel. I have now reached the over 102,000 view mark. <laughs> So grateful for that. Uh, if you've missed any of my shows, 
So all the early shows that I did not have the camera for are on iTunes, so I would love you to subscribe there. And since I have cameras in my studio now, you can actually see the live uh, re-broadcast uh, for free by subscribing on YouTube. My interviews with fabulous guests like Don Wells, Marianne from Gilligan's Island, and uh, Corey Feldman. You remember him, Stand By Me, uh, Goonies, um, Gremlins, and then Muhammad Ali's daughter, Layla Ali, and so many more fabulous guests who actually came to the studio. You can see them live in radio that you can see and hear. And then I have that special playlist for uh, our deaf community where I had this bright idea. I woke up one morning and thought, oh, since I have cameras, I can bring an interpreter and have uh, shows available to that community as well. Peace in, peace out to the San Diego deaf uh, community. I know that they're wonderful uh, followers and supporters and listeners of mine too. So you are unique and special and wonderful. So now we have a very special guest today. I am delighted to introduce to you to Dr. Davina Kotulski, a licensed clinical psychologist, life coach, spiritual counselor, best-selling and award-winning author and speaker, and nationally known LGBT rights leader. She's passionate about helping people overcome obstacles to make their dreams come true and spent 13 years working as a psychologist in a federal prison. As a respected leader in the LGBT equality movement, Davina has appeared in dozens of documentaries, Newsweek magazine, USA Today, CNN, the San Francisco Chronicle and the LA Times. She shared the stage with civil rights leader uh, Reverend Cecil Williams, Dolores Huerta, and Senator Mark Leno, and ce celebrities like Cloris Leachman, Dustin L Lance Blank, and comedian Margaret Cho. She's received numerous awards for her public speaking and leadership, including the Saints Alive Award and San Francisco LGBT Pride Community Grand Marshal. Please welcome with me to the studio... Dr. Davina Kotulski. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Did I get your last name right? I meant it. That's right. Correct. Yeah. With you. I Davina got it right. Kutulski, absolutely. Happy yeah. Halloween. Thank you. Happy Halloween to you. And thank I, you for inviting me to be here with you today. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, we, and I am just, I've known you for a couple of years, maybe. We've about crossed five, years. five that yeah. couple yeah. is more than, and, and, it, and it's, it, we, we're in the same watering pool for positive energy yes. at Agape International Spiritual Center. A You're place. a practitioner there. We pass cross paths in different uh, events and ministries, but we've never got to know any, each other very well. So I'm very, very excited that we get to do it on the air. Me too. Yay! Yeah, to Yay! Here. So you, you, I was so impressed with all these uh, things that you've already done and Ditto. who you are. <laughs> <laughs> We're both shrinks that want people to expand. Yes, We absolutely. have that in common. Spiritually absolutely. as well as psychologically. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. In the mind, body, spirit, uh -huh. soul. Yes. And 13 Definitely. years in a federal prison that must have been amazing it was it was really amazing um, to work with women in prison and to try to bring those spiritual technologies um, life coaching as well as traditional psychology to an environment that pretty much wants to give the minimum to the the clientele there. right right yeah. right it yeah was, so so what would you say was the 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 number one uh, learning experience that you had that sort of stayed with you from that time there? The number one learning experience would be that when we can give people unconditional love, no matter what they've been through, and see the best in them, they can change. Mm. If we can't, if we always see people who are incarcerated or other people in our lives according to the worst thing they ever did or the worst day they ever had, mm -hmm. they will be stuck in that vibration and they will never be able to be lifted out of it. And so, so that was what so, I learned. So it's, it's just as much our responsibility yes. as it is theirs. That's right. That's right. Because when we put somebody in prison for a crime they've committed, we are always seeing them as, well, what did you do? Right? Wrong. And mm -hmm. what did you do wrong? And mm -hmm. you're a criminal. And if we always keep seeing people as criminals or we see them again as the worst thing that they ever did, in their life because people are in prison typically for the worst things they've right the worst behavior right. they've ever had right right um, then we never allow them to shift out of that and grow mm -hmm. and become 
good productive citizens. Right, right. And you, and and, and I'm going to put the moose on the table. Mm-hmm. Um, I did this uh, earlier, actually the the beginning of the month with Akuyo. Uh huh. Yeah. So Akuyo She's Graham, wonderful. isn't she wonderful? She's so wonderful. she was on, and she is the producer of that Voices of the Unheard, mm-hmm. yeah. which is a play using and and uh, actors mm-hmm. and poetry f- written from women who are incarcerated. Right, and, and young people. Right, mm-hmm. and I gave her the same moose on the table yeah. because there are those, I'm not one of them, mm-hmm. who will say, but they had a choice. Mm-hmm. They made the wrong choice. Yes. If you do the crime, mm-hmm. right, yeah. you have to do the time. Right. So there is no hope. Right. Once once or or even the real hard ones Mm -hmm. are child molesters. Mm -hmm. Okay, Are you saying that it is our responsibility to let them off the hook or forgive them or whatever it is? Help help the person who is saying that. And you may not be able to change their mind. I mean, some people you can't. Right. Okay. so so to be clear, I do believe that people need a timeout. If you've hurt someone in society, just like a kid or whatever, you need a timeout. You need boundaries. You need structure and you need support to be able to change your behavior and Mm -hmm. to not continue to engage in behaviors that are destructive to you and to society. Right. 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 So that needs to be there. Okay. But how we use that time really makes a difference. If we're warehousing people, then they're not changing. They're not growing, right? Mm. And in a lot of our prison system, we're simply warehousing people. We're getting them off the streets, and we're not providing them the skills or the opportunities to grow. We're not introducing them to the kind of, like, let's say, um, you know, uh, technology, life coaching uh, strategies, behavioral modification types of things, thought changing, that can help them shift their lives. We're not introducing them to a new philosophy or way of understanding. And so what happened was um, I began working like literally a week out of graduate school. I graduated from the California School of Professional Psychology. Mm -hmm. A week later, I started my job at the Federal Correctional Institution in Dublin, California. Um, I'd worked with men in prison as a graduate student assistant for the California Department of Corrections, which had even less resources. Mm. Within the federal system with women, um, they hired psychologists, but they did not have a lot of groups when I when I joined. And so uh, I was very lucky in that um, I just started doing therapy. And I was doing, I was literally doing 35 hours of therapy every week. So, you know, we'd do the meetings and that, but every chance I got, I would, I just, my schedule was full. Um, so I saw, you know, seven clients a day. And I kept hearing the same stories over and over again. I was just about to ask. Yeah. Sexual assault. You know, women who had been abused as children, had been sexually assaulted as children, had been raped as as adults. Because of the sexual abuse and the physical abuse they experienced as children, they had low self-esteem. They got involved in bad relationships. They they turned to alcohol and drugs to numb their PTSD. And so it was just downward spiral after downward spiral. So what I realized was, oh my God, we've got to create a program that is intensive, that works with people and helps helps these women recover from their, their abuse and their trauma. Yes. And so I just started creating groups. I, I created a nine-month um, trauma recovery program called right. um, New Pathways. Did that in English and Spanish, and it had you know, uh, helping people manage their stress, their anger, go through the trauma of what they experienced, have some expressive arts uh, parts to it, some family dynamics. And, um, you know, people do family constellation work now. I was bringing in uh, Virginia Satir's, you know, family psychodrama. So I'd never heard of constellations before, but we were doing almost what, you know, what people know as constellation work with the women in that program Uh to give them a deep dive into re, you know, kind of, going back and, and creating a, a new corrective experience, mm-hmm. a new emotional experience over what had happened in the past. I worked with a lot of women who were murderers and mm-hmm. there was no anger management group that, and it's like, okay, well we need to have an anger management group where we can talk about like what took you to a place that you actually killed, killed somebody, somebody and right. how do we deal with that? Because I'm sure you don't want to do that again. Right. 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 Um, that's, yeah. that's, that's amazing on, on several fronts. So one is, um, this is accidentally on purpose the last week of the month yeah. and it's my sexual healing with Dr. Marissa 
special series. And wow. all of you know that I have two ends to that. One is how you can have 11 different kinds of orgasms when I bring in uh, tantric experts to sexual healing and ridding uh, the world of female genital mutilation. Uh, sex trade mm -hmm. was last month, I believe. And now we're talking about sexual abuse. Yeah. Which sounds like, would, would you say it's like 90% of what you... What you I, I would say that over 50% of the women that were in that I worked with in prison yes. and that are in prison are victims of sexual abuse 50%. and physical abuse. Yeah. That's a yeah. very, very high And those are the people that will percent. say it, you know. Right, you right. You can imagine some people don't want to talk about right, it. Right, 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 yeah. right. So, so we have to start with changing our BS, yeah. our belief system that people who commit crimes mm -hmm. are doing it because they are evil, you know, right. um, um, they're born evil and they're out to do harm. Right. It's there are very few so psychopaths in the world. Very okay. few. But we can but we can create um, antisocial and narcissistic personalities and people and borderline personalities and people by not giving them the you know what they haven't have the proper parenting and their attachment is poor. But we can we can go back and we can help many people to show them love to to have those those deep uh, unconditional positive regard type relationships with them so that they can begin to love themselves mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. reparent themselves as well and shift that. What percent that you saw would you say came from poor parenting? Oh, at least more, more than 50%. More than I mean, 50%. May, yeah. So, so Psychology Today, I think, calls it 7 out of 10. Yeah, Oprah says 8 high. out of 10. Yeah. I just heard another statistic that it was 93% come from dysfunctional homes. Because so, yeah, because you have a situation where I mean, some people are committing crimes because they they're they're in survival. Yeah. They're they're in they need fi to financially survive. Other people are committing crimes because they're in a different kind of survival. But it's because they 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 have no coping skills. They don't know any other way, and they keep turning to the the drugs and the alcohol, mm -hmm. the bad relationships, yeah. the crime. Yeah. To yeah, because they don't know how to function in society. Right. Absolutely. Right. right. So just putting them out of society again without yeah. teaching them how to function in society does no one any good. Then they just get out. And and, and I worked with many people that, ha that they were in prison for 10, 15 years. Okay, you've done your time. They kicked out. Right. Maybe, They're back maybe in. 10 bucks. Yeah. They have nowhere to go. Yeah. Nowhere to yeah. go. And so, yeah, yeah what are they going to do? You know, right. I, or they don't have the mental health services they need. I worked with one woman who was schizophrenic and she finished her time. And um, she, they wouldn't give her a halfway house because she needed special needs that they couldn't provide. So they kept her in prison until her expiration date. She went out. She had nowhere to go. She had no mental health services. Mm. She walked. She wrote a note. She walked into a bank, handed them a note, and said, you know, this is a stick-up. And then she went inside, outside and sat down on the, the sidewalk and waited for the police to pick her up and take her back to prison. Wow. Yeah. She had nothing. Other clients get out. They have nowhere to go, nothing to do, so they break into a car to have a place to sleep, you know. And then get picked up. It's finally changing. Mm -hmm. You know, we are spending now more money on helping mm -hmm. people kind of transition out, but yep. but still, yeah. the resources are not there. Mm. Mm. If you've just tuned in and you're wondering what we're talking about, this is Sexual Healing with Dr. Marissa, and we are talking about something that we don't like to talk about, which is crime, the prison system. Uh, my special guest today is Dr. Davina, and she it has uh, spent 13 years as a psychologist in the federal prison, and it is clear that we have to change the way we are looking at people and crime and rehabilitation. Yes. Otherwise, we're never going to get out of this vicious circle. No, and, and so I was quite lucky um, in, in so many different ways. I stumbled upon a unopened box of Tony Robbins personal power CDs, right? Uh -huh. Or <laughs> tapes, I guess, at the time. Yeah. And they had been sent into the prison. The education department had them in a closet. They didn't want them. I said, oh, my God, can I take them? Right, right. Yeah, go ahead. So I listened to them, and I thought, oh, I want to teach this. I want to have a class on this. So I was I contacted uh, Tony Robbins folks, and they gave me permission for three years to teach Fabulous. all of his stuff in the prison. So I was wow. teaching Tony Robbins. I was teaching them um, the teachings of Thich Nhat Hanh, Miracle of Mindfulness, Meditation. Mm. Um, and then, uh, you know, I discovered The Secret. And so I brought The Secret into the prison. And I was showing that in all of my groups. 
And is that how you ended up at Agape? Uh, that kind was, of? That was, I yeah. knew about Agape uh, oh, before oh, I okay. moved, but okay. I was called. There was a yeah, spiritual yeah, calling, yeah, 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 that, yeah, that, yeah. a tap that brought me to Agape. That, yeah, that's it's so pretty funny. wild. I can, yeah, I can share yeah. a little bit about that, but... Um, but before I do, yeah, so bringing the secret in, and then the staff were like, oh, I, hey, you've got that video, right? Can, can I borrow it? Because they'd heard about it from the inmates. And so then the staff, they wanted to borrow it. Oh, the, how yeah. cool it is It was really that? cool. Yeah. How cool is that? And I mean, I had just fantasies about like, you know, we would start the morning with the loudspeaker and, and you know, because there's, there's a speaker. Um, they're always telling people what to do in the right. prison, you know. right. And, inmate so-and-so report to what you you know and then there's the special housing unit right where inmates sit 23 hours a day they just sit in these cells locked up and I thought I really was like what if we played inspirational music and uh you know not podcasts because they didn't have them back then right but um because I've I've been out about 10 years now but what if we played like inspirational tapes we played Tony Robbins we played Abraham Hicks like what if we had yeah. if since they have Dr. to be Michael here Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith yeah exactly <laughs> right the life visioning <laughs> yeah, process yeah. so yeah. since they had to be there 20 Wayne Dyer mm-hmm. they had to be there 23 hours a day why not put on positive music or positive inspirational talk Absolutely. at least you know from like nine to five right. so that they were getting something right. oh that was too crazy was it yeah yeah, yeah. well I mean, something's got to give. I think the recognition, I think, you, like you said, it is getting better. The, the the fact that the recidivism rate is so high mm-hmm. and it's understandable if there's no place to go when you get yeah. out or if you had a better status inside than you do outside, you then why it. why would you want to come out? And for many people, that so, was true. Yeah. It was better in prison. Uh, yeah. So we, we have to really, I really love I mean, um, uh, guests like this who who are in the solution. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we need is people who aren't complaining about the problem and working in the solution. So so for that, I'm giving you Dr. Marissa's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award. Thank you very much. (laughs) In recognition. And not everybody gets that award. Thank you. (laughs) All right. so, So what's interesting is you took this experience mm-hmm. and you actually wrote a fictional yeah. book yeah right yep so so there's there's a it's very real and i'm gonna hold the book up now i think uh chris is gonna show, oh he's already got it up so so it is it's a fictional book it's already won the nautilus book award for inspirational yes. fiction yeah. which is congratulations Thank that's you very so much. amazing it's only been out what a, a year a year yeah, yeah that's amazing thank you and and it's got some nice juicy words in there so it's very <laughs> real and and how much of this is is uh is real yeah <laughs> yeah so i began writing the book when i was working in the prison and um and I wanted to create something that was going to tell the real stories of what went on, but obviously I needed to uh, protect the, the, the players. And, yes. and so what, I, what it is, is it's a compilation of different people that I worked with, um, the main character, and, um, and also the various things that do go on in the prison. So, um, you know, prisons are interesting places. They're kind of little small, you know, communities. So you have your, your health service, you have your food service, you have... Um, your religious service, your own like church services yeah. that go on there. Yeah. So it's its own little community. And a lot of wild things happen in prison. I mean, the fascinating thing about working there is that every day is a different day. <laughs> also, sometimes you don't know uh, who's doing what mm-hmm. and um, who's engaging in criminal activity and who isn't. So um, I worked with some amazing, wonderful staff members. I also worked with some staff members that really surprised me because of the direction that they took their lives. Right. Um, and, you, you know, sexual assault um, by staff members on inmates was rampant. And so there's some of that in the in the book. So I had to deal with that and mm. um, and, you know, teaching teaching staff like how to not identify do that, how to not do that, <laughs> how to identify the signs, mm-hmm. um, how to report that. Uh, just just some mind boggling things. Um, also, the, the different situations that women deal with it in prison, you know, some of them lose their children mm. because if if uh, let's say, for example, there was somebody who uh, committed a crime. Yeah. If they didn't report that, it's a sort of a guilt by association and conspiracy charge. And so many women were in prison because they didn't turn in their boyfriends or spouses or brothers. Um. And they may or may not have had anything to do with what's going on. And right. conspiracy crimes actually carried 
longer sentences than if you just plea bargain. So these women who did not have access to names and couldn't turn anybody else in and cop a plea ended up doing much longer time. So I worked with one woman who was in prison for 30 years um, because she didn't turn her husband in. Um, another wow. for conspiracy to distribute methamphetamines who's doing a 30-year sentence who's still behind bars. Um, many of the women that I worked with um, were able to get some clemencies from Obama, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, but so if, if the husband went into uh, prison and they went into prison, sometimes the children ended up going up for adoption. So they had to deal with things like that. Um, the or guilt the, of right, that. Mm -hmm. Or their kids would go into foster care and then their kids were being mm -hmm. assaulted. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just a lot of different scenarios that I bring up. And also it's told from the point of view of a psychologist, right? Sort of right. a liberal psychologist. Right who is there to make a difference, and she's idealistic, and what she faces as she goes through, how do you be in this paramilitary environment? How do you um, work with people who um, have committed crimes and, and still find their humanity? And how do you keep your heart open in an environment that's very negative and deceptive in many different ways? Yeah. And yeah. then the other, yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Yeah, how, how to keep balanced in all of that yeah. and still see the good, right? Right in everyone, even the staff. Yeah, right. Yeah. And who and are who are your family too? Because you're all there protecting each other. Because uh -huh. you know, I mean, people get stabbed, they get assaulted by inmates. Things happen, and so it's it's a tricky environment. Mm -hmm. Did you have to sign something when you left to say? You know, like Vegas. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a not. good thing. No. That's a good thing. And and so you know, again, it's like um, the book is all those kinds of things happen when I worked there, mm -hmm. but I, but it's not specific to you know. I'm not calling anyone out. Right. Right. Know? Right. Right. Um, but it is a real look. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a very it's, real. Look. It's a real look at what's and and the thing that I love about it is that it incorporates the kinds of uh, treatment or treatment processes mm -hmm. that actually helps take people from a place of brokenness yes. to hope. That's right. Yes. That's right. So so yeah. that's what you're about. That's what you that's, that's, what I'm about. that's your that's your role in life. And that's that's all of us, right? We yeah. all have these pieces things happen to us and we feel uh, broken by them. We feel that we can't move past it and we have to keep finding the best in ourselves and others. Even our current president, right, uh, th which is creating a lot of challenges personally for me. <laughs> yep, but yep. it's like, okay, what's what's the good in this? What is the opportunity in yeah, this? Yeah. Um, but yeah, if we can only see, you know, if we can only see people's darkness, we can, and we can't see their light. We they will never transform. Correct. Right? Correct. And so that is what we've got to do. We've got to find the good, and it can be hard. I mean, I worked with some people that did some horrific things. Right. Horrific right. things. Right. And it's like, okay, what? where's the goodness in this person? Yeah. Where can I find it? Where can I connect? Yeah. Where yeah. can I even, you know, it's like, and, I, and you don't want to particularly put yourself in people's shoes because there are things people did that it's like, no, I, I wouldn't do that. Correct. You know, like Correct. even I, on my worst day, yeah. God help me, I would never do that. Right. Um, right. But, you know, we can all understand getting angry. We can all understand doing something where we lose our temper or uh, feeling defeated in some way and, and making a poor choice. Um, or we can see how if we had been in those shoes. Right, right, we right, done that. right, right. So the key here is in every situation, no matter how bad it is, it's an opportunity. Uh, I love the way our teacher, Reverend Michael, Dr. Mm -hmm. I think the name's getting longer. Uh, Michael <laughs> Bernard Beckwith says, like, even in tragedy or e even in something that you hate, mm -hmm. what is that situation, person, place, or thing asking you to break your heart wide open to develop more of? What yes. is it? Yes. And if everyone can see that in things that we don't like, it would be much better. Yeah. Because, because of the shift from the darkness to the light. You can right. always look into the darkness. There's so much darkness that you can always look into darkness. Mm -hmm. So it takes a muscle and energy to focus and find the good. That's my, that's my, I'm just fi every day, find the good, find the good, find the good. Yeah. And then when I find right. the good, right. it's really good. And then I feel better for it. So if you want to try feeling better, 
you might want to try yeah, that. Find yeah, find the good. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right, the upward spiral. And and again, for folks who are incarcerated, you know, many times they're there because people no one found the good in them. I, yes. I cannot tell you how many people were told, oh, you're going to grow up and go to prison. You're going to go up and go to prison. Well, okay, that's a nice affirmation that you're telling your kid. <laughs> right. And sure enough, your kid grew up and uh, went to prison. Right, right. Um, I also worked with a lot of Native American clients and whose parents had been taken from their homes mm-hmm. and put in boarding schools and where they were abused and where they were told to, you know, the whole uh, kill the Indian, save the man kind of thing, where they were beaten for speaking their language, where they were beaten for their spiritual traditions, where their hair was cut shorn. And so I worked with a lot of children and, you know, um, I'm Jewish. And so that we know there's this sort of notion of intergenerational transmission of trauma. Um, you know, people who have had family members who were in the Holocaust all that stuff comes down. Well, we had an American Holocaust here, and right. it, it happened to our, you know, Native American yeah. brothers and sisters. Yeah. And so there are way too many Native Americans behind bars, and and it's because we have not, um, as a country, addressed the the trauma, the PTSD that has the harm that has been mm-hmm. done to no. our indigenous people. Yeah, we we just. M- make more prisons yes that's that's what the industry has become and and so if you are currently not uh employed and have time on your hands or if you are employed and you're looking for something important to do because you feel like your job isn't doing that for you there are plenty of things like this to get involved in uh, I'm sure you, you you can come back after break and tell us uh, some specific organizations sure. to get involved in to help with that. Uh, sure. And in the meantime, you can pick up her book. We'll be back in two and two when we thank the sponsor who makes this show possible. We'll be back. Peace in and peace out. So what is it like for women to rehabilitate in prison? Is there a better solution to do the crime and do the time? With an inside look through the eyes of psychologist Dr. Davina Kotolsky, her book Behind Barbed Eyes, winner of the Nautilus Gold Award for Inspirational Fiction, gives a real look at what keeps women trapped in the system of self-hatred inside and outside bars. Get your copy of Behind Barbed Eyes at your favorite online and audible bookseller today. And we are back. You are tuned into my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at Naturally High Noon out of the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood, California with Universal Broadcasting Network, radio and TV, and every Thursday at 7, Saturday at 1 on my syndicated CNBC News Radio channel, KCAA AM 1050 FM 102.5. 3, FM 106.5 and everywhere and all the time on iHeartRadio. And this is a show about hope and happiness. So today we are highlighting the happiness that comes from rehabilitating women and and men, anyone in the prison system with something more than just providing housing. And Dr. Davina has been enlightening us and educating us on the kinds of things that we need to do and starting with the BS, calling the BS, the belief system that uh, people who are in prison are unchangeable or unfixable and that they are inherently evil. Uh, Most uh, or uh, many, many have grown up with sexual abuse uh, with some kind of abuse, uh, with not enough education on how to deal with anger, with trauma, yes. uh, not in a healed space. Yep. So we can definitely do that. Yeah, Organ- and, and substance abuse, families with substance abuse, yep. so that was passed down. Yeah. yeah. So if you are listening and you would, one, like to help, or you have someone who is currently in that situation who needs some help and some uh, development and education, I know you offer something. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm a psychologist, and, yes. and so I, I do offer uh, support for that, and individual therapy and whatnot. Um, also, uh, I'm a part of the Freedom Light Prison Ministry at the Agape International Spiritual Center, and um, monthly, if you're in the Los Angeles area, um, every month we do um, a, a meeting for people who are friends and family members of incarcerated individuals or folks who have gotten out of uh, a facility, and you can come in for the support group. It's free for everybody. 
Um, also, uh, the Agape International Spiritual Center Freedom Light Ministry, um, we do a uh, we send letters. We send inspirational letters in once a month um, to anyone that is incarcerated. So if you want to contact Agape um, and the Freedom Light Prison Ministry and give us a name and register number or prison number address, whatever, of the person who you'd like to, us to send That's inspirational beautiful. letters, we yeah. will send an inspirational yeah. letter to them. Yeah, beautiful, so. beautiful. Also, um, the Science of Mind Spiritual Centers uh, have a program where they, which I helped start, yay. Yay. Um, I was Good really, really excited to do that, mm-hmm. where they uh, send in a, you can, for fourteen ninety five you can sponsor a Science of Mind year-long um, s- subscription to the magazine for an incarcerated individual so they can get some good stuff to, mm-hmm. to read while they're mm-hmm. in there. Beautiful. And it's not a religion. Nope. It is a way of thinking that uh, sort of fixes the lie that we're b- broken, Yeah, th- that there's something wrong with us. Absolutely. And I think for anybody that's, uh, it is not Scientology, <laughs> uh, Science of Mind. Uh, if you, I, I read a book every morning called This Thing Called You. Uh-huh. By Ernest, Ernest Holmes, Holmes and uh, he was one of the four fathers of, and it's just you know, it's like modern day. It's I'm like okay, positive psychology, you're okay, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The reason yeah. I resonated most as, as a psychologist is because it is it's a it's a it's a positive psychology. It is seeing ourselves as whole, perfect, and complete. It is about finding the divine within. And um, and anybody can do that. So finding the best in yourself. Yes. So it's uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah. And then and then any other spiritual tradition that you might connect with, it, it's a nice compliment yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, and again, um, no one's paying me to say this. I just these are organizations that yes. are fantastic. Yes. Um, Homeboy Industries and Homegirl Industries here in Los Angeles is fantastic. I did a fundraiser for them um, where uh, we um, we did we had a, s- several actors read parts from the book, oh, cool. and then we donated um, the proceeds to uh, the Homeboy Industries and Homegirl Industries, and they help they provide job skills training and uh, rehabilitation, um, addiction services for folks getting out of prison. So they're fantastic. Up north in San Francisco, there's the Delaney Street program. They have a restaurant. They have a moving company. They do wonderful things. So I would say find out what's in your local community that already exists and and support those things as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, at one point, Reverend Michael said something and it really excited me. And it was the notion of, you know, since there's this, these, these private prisons, which I don't support the, the majority of private prisons out there, as we've saw, as we saw from that mother Jones article, the level of abuse and, um, and not, not feeding people, not clothing them, not providing medical care, hiring just anybody off the street, those kinds of for-profit private prison systems are, are wholly despicable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, But the notion of a private prison where you are, um, where people are being inspired and they're being, they have access to the best, you know, sort of change technology. Like you talked about the BS, the belief systems. I mean, that was a lot of the work that I did with with the people that would come to um, my second chances group that I had. It was like, let's look at the belief system. What do you believe about yourself in the world? How do we change that? Where is that belief system taking you? Is that moving you closer to where you want to be or further away? So we we looked at that. brought in NLP, right? So Neuro-ling- neuro-linguistic programming yeah. for those of us. Well, you've been throwing some terms and I've been trying to catch you. <laughs> Two psychologists <laughs> talking in, in systems and, right, and, right. and we forget who the audience is. Unless, yeah. I, actually, I'm sure I have so some Some people probably know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But sort of bringing in, again, sort of these non-traditional ways that of, of healing that can provide healing and results. I, now, I have to say, I was a rebel rouser. In, uh, I was both a rebel rouser and well-respected within the prison. I, I kept getting employee of the month. I, wo- I, um, I was employee of the year, right, wow. pr- probably about two years before I left. But I also really pushed the... Edge of the envelope. The edge of the envelope. Uh-huh. Um, the the <laughs> warden supported me. The staff supported me. The higher up psychology department was like, "What? Why are you bringing in Tony yeah, Robbins? Yeah, what yeah, are you? What's yeah. this? Yeah. You no, know, no. coaching yeah. stuff? Right? It worked. Yeah. And I wanted I people you. to have results. Yeah. So, um, I was I was respected, but I, but I was known for for pushing the envelope. Yeah. And um, and which, that's which what I'm, you have to do. That's what you have to do. That's what you have change. to do. And you can support her pushing the envelope <laughs> by getting her book. And I'm not. I I, I don't even think. I I think this is a a great way for normal people mm-hmm. to recognize 
the hope behind rehabilitation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's why I endorse this book. And Thank uh, you. you'll have to get it. And it just got released as Audible book. Yeah, it just got released as Audible so. book. It's also been endorsed by uh, Colin Tipping, who is the author. Um, he's a Hay House author, best selling author of, and I think he's also a Sounds True author too. He's like, really prolific. Um, but he has a book called Radical Forgiveness and Radical Self Forgiveness. Oh, yeah. And um, and I really appreciate his work because, again, it's the book also deals with forgiveness. And, um, you know, Dr. King, Nelson Mandela, um, you know, these were heroes of mine, both as an LGBT advocate and activist and as a psychologist and, and a spiritual person, because, again, it's like, where can we offer forgiveness? How do we allow people to have safe passage in our hearts? How do we, how do we Ooh, like forgive that. them mm -hmm. so that they can heal? How do we forgive them so that we can, can heal? heal? You yes, know, yes. and and get off also get off our own high horse, yes. right? Because no one, no one's perfect, and we want to have compassion for right. for everyone. Right. More compassion we have for others, the more compassion we have right. for ourselves Same with as the well. Homelessness situation for everything. Oh, We're yeah. all human, and we can all understand, as you said, anger and not knowing what to do with it, sadness and not knowing what to, hopelessness and not knowing what to do with it. Right. And so I'm gonna piggyback and tell you. Because because we don't get to know each other, I actually have a book coming out. Congratulations! Uh, thank you. Uh, next August, so I'll, I'll have you do this too I, for me. I would love to. <laughs> it's My called pleasure. Eight Ways to Happiness, and the only reason why I'm bringing oh, it up, great. is because the fourth chapter is from shame to dignity. So oh, the first chapter is beautiful: loneliness into hope, heartbreak mm -hmm. into love, so um, uh, loss into to faith. Mm -hmm. But the the shame into dignity is specifically for people who have done something who they cannot forgive themselves for. Uh -huh. That's so or important. you cannot forgive them for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's beautiful. They have Morgan yeah. James is uh, bringing it out August uh, 2018 is the release date. Dr. Yeah. Michael Bernard Beckwith is writing not just the forward, but the afterward, too. Oh, that's fantastic. Whoop, whoop. Congratulations. Yes, and the foreign rights are being uh, distributed by uh, Bill Gladstone, uh -huh. who oh, yeah. is a... Uh, Whose books does he? Uh, Neil Donald Walsh's books mm -hmm. and Eckhart Tolle. So I am so grateful right. and so, so that's excited. That's Waterside Agency, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, Waterside's doing the foreign yeah. foreign rights. Congratulations! So thank you. Yeah, so that's going to be Wonderful. great. So we're all in this together. Yes, we're all. You know, we're we want to shine the light where there's yeah. darkness and not complain about the darkness. That's that's the bottom line. Yes. Yeah, and I mean that's so fantastic that you're talking about shame into dignity because when we stay in that shame. Again, it's it's a lower vibration. It doesn't allow us to to step out. And whether it's uh, you know, there's shame is such a pervasive thing in our culture, right? Yeah. A around you know what what have you done? What mis even like oh you chose to get a divorce? Shame on you. There's right, like so much right. shame. Oh, I'm proudly, <laughs> <laughs> happily right. divorced. Right. So so there, you know yeah. It, it's yeah. And and same thing with so many different communities um, where there's been racism or sexism or homophobia mm -hmm. you know it's like the culture tries to blanket you with shame and yes. then you have to kind of like get it off of yeah, you yeah, yeah, so that yeah. you can step forward I know within the LGBT community which again I worked as, a, as an advocate and uh, worked to change the laws around marriage equality uh, worked with people around coming out there's you know so much shame and and it's not ours you know and, and it's like letting it go right and finding that love for yourself and for others and and I think uh, you're not busy at all, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm, you're going to give me for a run for my m schedule money here. I mean, like, like you, <laughs> yeah. I'm passionate about yeah. multiple and you things juice and your intersections. Life. And you juice your life yeah. and you know that, you know, this is the dash. Yeah. And we're we're going right. to juice. We're going to ring the heck out of the dash in yep. the middle. I and love that uh, you're saying that. that. Yeah, yeah. You know, the first time I saw that poem, um, one of my inmate clients brought it to me, and they're like, Dr. Ski, I think you'll love this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is yeah. amazing. It's yeah. such a beautiful poem. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I love that image of the dash. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's, that's where it that's happens. That's our life. That's our life. Yeah. So um, we're actually running out of time, believe it or not. That was I knew it was going to go it, really fast. Great. There's Thank you so at much. least 100 questions that I haven't asked you, but we'll have to get we'll to that. We'll go to lunch. Like, we'll go to lunch <laughs> and do that. The last question I asked, I always ask my guests mm -hmm. is, um, wh what, who and what are you grateful for uh -huh. uh, that, that got you to where you are now and, and will launch you into more? I am so grateful. First of all, t to to God, just grateful to the to the Great Spirit, um, because you know, without that Spirit 
creating life for us, and we there's just nothing. No life. There's right. no life. I mean, that's, that's my that's my <laughs> yeah. belief. Yeah. Um, but I'm also grateful for what I call earth angels, and those are people that have um, believed in me, have seen the best in me, have loved me when you know there's times I couldn't love myself, have offered um, wisdom, um, have just been generous and loving, and and you know, and so um, and that happens all the time. It happens with strangers. It just you know where we. At any moment, we can be somebody's earth angel. And yeah. I, I love the people that that continue to just surprise and amaze me. And I love being that for other people mm-hmm. as well. Any names? Um, uh, or you're afraid yeah, you might leave some out? <laughs> oh, I'm sure I'll leave some out. But um, I remember when I was uh, uh, a teenager and um, I got involved early on in uh, in working with substance abuse because um, I, got, I w- had an alcoholic problem very young. And I would say... You know, definitely the the my first sponsor was amazing, um, but then also there was this woman, Sister Bernadette, a Catholic nun that I worked with at um, a place called Laurelhurst Manor up in Portland, where I grew up, and mm. and to have a nun just be so supportive and loving, and she was always saying, "You're just you're so great. Your parents must be so proud of you," and you know, um, and so as a as an openly gay person who had been shamed. Mm. And also Jewish told, I'm going to go to hell for being gay. I'm going to go to hell for being Jewish. To meet this wonderful woman, Sister Bernadette, who was just so kind. She even cussed it now and again. <laughs> and just so real. Uh-huh. Like, she literally changed my, my mm. life. That's and beautiful. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. So well, peace in and peace out to Sister Bernadette. Yeah. Thank you for uh, supporting and uh, loving up my guest today. Uh, thank thank you. you so much for coming on thank and you sharing so much for yourself, <laughs> your story, your, the book. Go out and get it today. And uh, we are uh, at the end of our time together when I end with the balance bar for today. Step up and let's see. The first thing is round 77 of the 21 day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa, where you try to do 21 days in a row without complaining, starts November the 1st, which is tomorrow. And uh, can you believe we've been doing this uh, for 77 consecutive months? July 1st, 2011, after Edwine Gain spoke at uh, Agape, uh, when she talked about this, I took the challenge and now have been splattering you with it. If you would like the daily tips and the video and a way to score yourself, you have to be honest and uh, post your scores and try to win the prize. Register at fourbalance.org. Get the app uh, that some teenagers put together for me last year. And uh, then we can all not complain together and raise the vibration all the way, all the way around the planet. Uh, also, Uh, Join me, Soldier Field, next weekend. If you are at all in the Chicago area, would love to see you. I get to speak, and possibly they, they, they might want me to sing at Soldier Field. It is a beautiful event called Journey's Dream, and it is a soldier of hope for the mental health illness community and uh, uh, focusing on multiple ways to find solution to mental illness and the healing. And there's many different modalities, uh, just like we spoke about today, in getting into health. So please do uh, uh, come and support that event. If you're uh, in the area, that would be wonderful. If you'd like to just make a donation, go to journeysdream.org. I'll be on sharing the stage, actually, with two interesting men. One is a friend of mine already, uh, the co-founder of Make-A-Wish Foundation, Frank. Uh, he will be there speaking, as well as Elvis's stepbrother, who I've not met yet, but he'll be one of the speakers there. So journeysdream.org. And remember that uh, every Monday now, when I'm not traveling, come to Seal Beach. I'm finally teaching Balanced Tai Chi Gong, a moving meditation that promotes inner peace one breath at a time. Uh, By the pier, Seal Beach Pier, every sunset, Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, no, I'm not Facebook living that, so you have to actually come for the class. No experience necessary, no mats necessary. If you'd like me to work with you on the beach, 
uh, for more hope and happiness or on the phone uh, f- in your life. If you if you know that you're not at 88% happiness and you resonate with some of the things that I say on the show, then please do contact me at fourbalance.org to schedule a free balance coaching session. And uh, also to give yourself a break. This is Dr. Marissa. Uh, tune in. Oh, next week. Next week, we have another fabulous. Remember the show that I did? I think it was a month, maybe two months ago. This goes way too fast. Uh, with a Guinness World Book Record climber who has the oldest person to climb all seven summits. He's doing it again, trying to break his own record, Werner Berger. Well, his beautiful partner, Heshi uh, Siegel, is going to be my guest and she is a powerhouse i don't know if there was a competition between the two of them which is more powerful but i think heshi is a beautiful woman who is doing so much with her uh, also um i think she's a uh, she's not as old Werner is 80 now i think climbing summits and she's a little younger but she's just a dynamo and she has this uh, beautiful project that she's on to provide water clean water to every child in Africa. Mm. So just a small goal, but she has this great product that it will get rid of all of the recycling that we need by actually uh, re- um, filtering water with just the water things that you carry. So it's a wonderful show. You'll you'll have a blast with her. She's a blessing and a character. Uh, Heshi Siegel, she'll be on next week. So keep it tuned to a show about hope and happiness. Take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive, E-I. Remember, it's all about balance. Peace in and peace out.